Welcome to K. Elizabeth Toasts, a podcast celebrating people who increase our quality of life. I'm your host, K. Elizabeth. Each episode is a heartfelt interview of a remarkable person making lives better. Give a listen if you are in need of a dopamine hint, or if you like toast, because this toasts for you. Can I first have you start by saying what your name is? Sure. Yeah. I'm Annie. (laughs) Uh, I use she and they pronouns. The question that I ask everyone at the beginning, do you know what the social determinants of health are? I do. Yeah. (laughs) Very well. (laughs) Tell me about that. Uh, So um, the social determinants of health, we've actually had a fairly strong grasp on since um, like the 80s and 90s. And it's the this overarching concept that the things that really determine somebody's health status and health outcomes mm-hmm. are things about how society is designed and how that person's, you know, various identities interact with society. So we know that all of the isms, racism, classism, you know, um, patriarchy, sexism, um, all of those things impact how somebody, uh, how they get care, what they have access to, um, just their day-to-day stress levels, you know. Uh Um, We know that the little tiny micro, we call microaggressions that people encounter every single day that put stress on the body, that changes the way that your body Um, expresses your DNA and it changes you at a cellular level. And unfortunately, it is very strongly linked with our top causes of death, which are like heart disease, Mm. cancer. I think diabetes is third or fourth at this point. So uh, I I just want to acknowledge that you are the first person that I've spoken to that's like, yes, this is what they are. And they've been around <laughs> since the 80s. So I just want to acknowledge that. And maybe could you say what your training is so that people yeah. have a sense? Yeah. They're like, what is this? Why do people know? Why does Annie know? Yeah. About this? Why do I know? I have a degree. My undergrad is in nutrition. I'm a mm-hmm. registered dietitian. And then I did my master's program, um, master's in public health. And then, uh, you know, my area of specialty is about weight and health and the way those two things interact. But really, on like a surface level, this should be as well known as the other things that we think of when we think about, like, how does somebody get healthy? Almost everyone is going to say something to the effects of, well, you know, eat good foods and move your body and, um, (laughs) you know... (laughs) Uh, I want I want these things to be on that list for everybody. That that's something that they yeah. think of immediately when they think about what affects my health and health outcomes. I love it. I really want to spend some time talking about access to healthcare and yeah. wondering if you could talk a little bit about your directory um, that you're working on and where did that come from? What was the need? What was yeah? So tell me about the directory. I think that fits so incredibly well. Yeah. I actually work on two different listings directories. I work for ASDA full-time. ASDA stands for the Association for Size, Diversity, and Health. Um, One of our bigger projects is hosting a healthcare provider listing of health at every size providers. Um, And yeah, so we're just out there trying to get better care for people in larger bodies. So yeah, so that's the Hayes directory. That's at asda.org slash listing. Then um, through my other organization, Radical Health Alliance, which is a more locally based um, organization here in Minnesota, I and a team of actually medical students is kind of who has come on board to help me get this project going. Uh, We have been putting together a healthcare provider directory for people who offer somewhat more inclusive and safer care for people in larger bodies. I am in a larger body. I call myself fat. That's a term I use. Um, And I I think about times when I've gone into medical providers and have needed care. Um, I think about one time in particular, I went in, I was miserably sick and uh, went into the doctor. And the first thing that he told me was that I needed to lose weight, which was, of course, not why I was there. (laughs) 
And I was like, well, I mean, I, I also would like to be able to think and breathe if we can start there. But anyway, so I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the, the need of this, um, of these directories or even yeah. why you got started doing it. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, the link between weight and health is not nearly as clear and that one of the major issues is access to health care. People in larger bodies are denied access or um, have um, lower rates of use of health care is because of pervasive weight bias in the healthcare systems, which is exactly what you experienced. Hmm. Going in with uh, a blocked air with a <laughs> like, you, you, yeah. you know, yeah, you, you have an acute issue that everybody gets at every weight, right? Like yep. those kind of interactions are the things that set people um, in larger bodies up to avoid health care. The people who experience the most weight stigma um, avoid health care. Uh, people in higher weight bodies delay uh, primary care, they delay mammograms, ovarian cancer screenings. Um, they uh, they also delay vaccines and other um, types of preventative care. All of a sudden, it, the the fact that we have worse health outcomes in certain areas of health isn't so surprising, so surprising. right? Yeah. 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 And it has nothing to do with the physiology of being in a larger body. It has to do with the societal experience, the social determinants of health. Yeah. So what made you decide, oh, yes, I'm just going to make a directory. That seems to be in my purview. <laughs> and I'm going to get medical students to help me. Like, how did that happen? <laughs> um, like, lots of happy accidents, I think. <laughs> Tell me about um, those happy accidents. <laughs> One of the very first things that I did um, well before Radical Health Alliance was established and um, before I was done with school was establish the Twin Cities Fat Community, which is an online Facebook group. And that group has grown. Um, I should get the numbers sometime. I think that we started in 2015 or 2016. Um, I started it with Kat Polavoda, who is um, Cake Plus Size Resales owner and local fat activist extraordinaire. And <laughs> we her. ran that group, yeah, from like 25 people the first year. And it's currently well over a thousand. We hit a thousand a couple of years ago. And this group is used for anything. I mean, truly anything. It doesn't even have to be fat related. People will just talk about other stuff. Um, I actually found my divorce lawyer through our group. <laughs> Uh, wow <laughs> we, just, we, we have good community like um yeah. we trust each other and we have similar values and so um we do talk about everything but one of the biggest things that people talk about is where can i go get better health care and so yeah. we had this very informal network of people saying who have you seen who should i not go see like who's awful who's great Mm -hmm. Who's going to just get me the treatment that I need? And so this showed just how cl clearly this need um, exists in our community. And I'm sure the Twin Cities in Minnesota is not unique. Go ahead. I have to say that when I scan through that Facebook um, community, mm -hmm. I would say probably 50 percent, 25 to 50 percent of all of the posts wow. are how do I get access to care that's going to be that's going to treat me as a human being. It's it's mm -hmm. people want it. Like, I think that's interesting. You're talking about 68 percent of people um, are avoiding it when they're in larger right. bodies. And yet you know, I'm seeing in this community that you've created people wanting it and not knowing how to get it. Exactly. So, OK, can we go back to I'm sorry, I, I keep cutting you off about the directory that you're doing right now <laughs> at, the, um, at the Radical Health Alliance. So what uh -huh. was it that you were like, yes, OK, I'm going to make this directory and I'm going to get how did like how did you get docs or medical students to join in? Like, how, how is this happening? Yeah. <laughs> how did you so make it happen? How did we make it happen? And honestly, I had sat on it for a little bit. One of my colleagues, Andrea Westby, who is a, a doctor, and they were a 
um, professor at the medical school at the U of M, the med students have a project as part of their training and they just have to go in the community and do something for community. Mm -hmm. And this group of students had been learning about weight inclusive health care and health at every size principles. And so they got in touch with me and the directory came up as something that like I have the foundation for what needs to happen, but just haven't had the time, energy and resources to put it all together. And they said, cool, let's do it. We want to do that. And so <laughs> we started it. They are the best. They just like have all the energy in the world. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, slowly but surely, we put together all of the the policies, the rules, the technology, the forms, uh, the design. They did it all. I also am hopeful that you could talk a little bit about Rad Fat Camp. So I'm yeah. curious, like. <laughs> I know camp camp 100% is probably one of the biggest highlights of my lifetime. So what is camp that was the <laughs> highlight of your lifetime? Tell yeah. me about it. I was a Girl Scout <laughs> for 12 oh. years. Yeah. Fat camp in the more traditional sense is a place where kids get sent to lose weight. That kid literally has to dedicate their summer off to being told that they're in a bad body and that they need to change in order for mm -hmm. something to, to be mm -hmm. happy, to be healthy, to be accepted, to be loved. Um, and so I wanted I wanted to change that narrative. I wanted to change what it meant to go to fat camp. Um, and I wanted to give adults who maybe were fat kids or even as fat adults struggle to find community where they really get to just exhale. So what did you do at fat camp? Oh, my God. We had lots of like educational type activities, mm -hmm. but interspersed with all those activities were options to do crafts. So I know we did we did some cross, not cross stitch. We did embroidery. Uh, I know we did friendship bracelets. Oh, um, we have a local group called the Subversive Sirens, and they yeah. are a um, like body liberation, BIPOC, um, synchronized swimming team. And they compete, but they also host like fun sessions where they teach you, a, you know, any level can do it. If you've never done yeah. synchro, you can try this out and they teach you how to do a little synchro routine. And we had a pool. We had access to a pool at this place. And so we did um, Subversive Sirens came out and did a synchro routine. We had a pool party. We had campfires, of course. We went on a hike. Um, Summer from Fat Girls Hiking came out to visit us. Um, we kayaked and canoed. We ate together. <sighs> What else? Badges. Oh, yes. I had to. <laughs> As a Girl Scout. <laughs> patches were core to the experience of camp and being a Girl Scout. And I, I just had to bring that back. And so we had a local illustrator design uh, patches for us. And we got them made into actual embroidered patches. And then, like, you could, like, earn them. T-shirts oh. and swag bags. Yeah. And a talent show. That's right. We did a talent show. <laughs> we did a lot in three days, man. Yes. <laughs> there was so much. There was so much. What sort of feedback did you get about Fat Camp? Just wonderful. Like one of the major things that we would do differently is we would oh, get more no, breathing we're not time. Talking about that, <laughs> we're going to talk about the good things. <laughs> Overwhelmingly, right? This was a positive impact on our community, um, yeah. and so yeah, like lots of people had you know some of the best memories of their lives were made at that event, um, myself included. <laughs> I love that you continue to think about inclusivity. I mean, I'll use that language. I know it's a it's a loaded term, but I love that you're thinking that way. And also, I want to recognize what what amazingness you've done. You know, creating a Facebook group that's got you know over a thousand people of a twin 
Twin Cities Fat community and um, creating, being a part of creating not one but two directories, having input into both of those, <laughs> having the foundation and the and the 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 vision for the for the local one. You're doing amazing things. I'm curious you. if you have anything. Um, I should have paused. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, I'm curious if you have any advice for people who want to do something yeah and don't know where to start Ooh, that's really good i i was very privileged that cannot be like left out of this conversation i was able to start rad health um without getting paid i didn't get paid for the first few years i was teaching yoga for free and all the money that came in from classes was just going into our bank account to help fund the future um and that was because i was married and i had a partner who was uh you know very well paid and could support both of us i mean i think that like i i think that i I don't think i've ever done anything where i didn't find a partner in crime to do what i wanted to do Mm. with i have thought of most of my partners as um like similar to life partners. Um, mm. My partner at ASDA, uh, Veronica, we were, the, we were the two like first paid employees of ASDA. Mm-hmm. Kat is sim- very similar. I, I felt like she was my partner um, in every, you know, every yeah. way you could mean that word. Um, and they're the person that you go to and you lean on and sometimes you cry with and sometimes you celebrate with. But that it's also the thing that like pushes you forward um, mm-hmm. and it makes it like much less easy to just, I don't know, let something let something die. <laughs> yeah, to give up. Um, like even our directory for Rad Health, it, it really did just sit there for two years. I, I didn't really know what to do with it or where to go with it. And these students came in and and then the load was split and I had different perspectives and um, we created something that I could really feel good about. I love it. So that feels like a really nice segue into my next question, which is if you could recognize someone who has helped you do this good in this world, if you could give a toast to someone, who would you toast? I think that I would probably toast one of my newer colleagues, Angel. Um, Angel has brought like a new conversation to my life and... um, and just like new energy and life. She's a light. She's so amazing and beautiful. And I love working with her. And so, yeah, I would toast Angel. Yay. Yay, Angel. Is there anything else that you can think of that that we didn't touch on that you want to make sure that we acknowledge? Half the things you asked me about, I was like, oh, yeah, I do do that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's uh, amazing how life like you know, you just keep moving with it. Um, and it's nice to revisit these things. So no, there's nothing I can think of off the top of my head. I'm- also, I want to make sure that we take time to celebrate what you've done. <laughs> that This toast is for you. Thank you for being an individual dedicated to providing quality and accessible healthcare. That you're making a pathway to that healthcare that the fat community needs. And thank you for taking some time and some energy and maybe a lot of time and a lot of energy (laughs) and making that possible. So thank you. This toast is for you. Thank you. Thank you for hosting me. This was honestly a very lovely like reminder of all the things that bring me joy. So (laughs) wonderful, wonderful. And I can't wait for COVID-19 to go away for so many reasons, but certainly one of them is Rad Fat Camp. (laughs) we will figure it out one way or another now it's time for your toast here is a toast to my fat community having close and intimate relationships with fat people has been life changing so I wanted to send a thanks to all of you for sharing your stories for being vulnerable and for really helping me feel heard and understood Stay fat, my friends. Now it's your turn. Record your own toast for consideration in a future episode at ketoasts.com. Thanks for joining us. And if you haven't already, 
go toast up some bread. Every positive action is worth toasting. Do you have tea? Is that what I saw? It's a chai tea or it's a chai, a dirty chai latte. Oh, that is, that is a whole other level. That's not just tea. (laughs) (laughs) When the pandemic started, I started making my own drinks and, um, yeah, it's working for you. That's my go-to winter drink. Mm -hmm. (laughs) 